I remember going to Trump's inauguration where I basically stood there going, oh, please let me blow you. Josh Peters and Archie Manners. Amongst all the chaos of this year, Archie and I have been lucky enough to create some videos that you all seem to enjoy. As we enter a new year, we thought it would be fun to show you some never seen before behind the scenes footage of some of our favorite videos. So first up, it was the time we decided to take a look alike of Ed Sheeran to a YouTube boxing match to find out if people really know their favorite celebrities. We knew the boxing fight was going to be a big deal. Actually, that's not true. I knew it was going to be a big deal. Archie, on the other hand. Of all the things I couldn't give a f about, two non-professional boxers <laughs> off the internet hitting each other a little bit in America and making millions of money is so low down on that list. We wanted to see what being a celebrity at an event like this was like. I say that, Archie didn't really care, so he stayed at home. But Casper and I brought Ty, who looked a bit like Ed Sheeran. Before we see us take a fake Ed Sheeran to Los Angeles, I want to say a massive thank you to Displate, the sponsor of this video. Displate make high quality prints on metal that you can put on your wall without the need of hammers, nails, or any other tools that I'm useless with. There are 1.4 million different designs available, like this one of the real Ed Sheeran. If you want to get your own displate, click the link in the description where you can get discounts as shown on screen now with super fast delivery and for every displate you buy, a tree is planted. With the real Ed Sheeran looking down on us, let's get back to what happened last year with the fake Ed Sheeran. Casper and I have arrived at um, LAX and now Ed Sheeran should be arriving any moment. So Casper and I arrived in Los Angeles ready to meet a guy called Ty, who we hoped looked like Ed Sheeran, which luckily he did. Yeah. Ty, welcome. Welcome, man. From here on out, you're officially Ed Sheeran. How does it feel? <laughs> Wait, Josh, too bad. Perhaps a slightly different accent, but we're in America. All British accents sound the same to these people. Sorry, man. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. As we battled crowds to get into Ed's blacked out SUV, our driver told us about all the other celebs he'd driven for. I was a DJ Khaled uh, oh, yeah. for one month. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no like way. All the celebrities. So he looks like Ed Sheeran. It doesn't matter that he doesn't sound like Ed Sheeran, but we were worried as to whether he'd behave like Ed Sheeran. Fascinating that, like, almost on the other side of the world, they still have the same full of it. He's over here in England. You like that? Is that a condo block? So, after a 10 hour flight and little sleep, our Ed Sheeran did what any pop star would do. Choking down my pro pops. I was still really nervous. I thought he looked like Ed Sheeran, but would anyone else? Indeed, Ty Jones with 7,034 followers was suddenly more famous than Casper Lee with 7 million followers. It wasn't long before the press were asking for interviews. We knew if journalists heard him speak, they might realize he wasn't Ed Sheeran. Sorry, man. No, it's all good. He's actually a bit of a problem with his throat. Yeah, hey. The money maker. Yeah, yeah. I'm Hannah from Dijon. Um, we'd love to interview you for the live countdown show. Is that something you're open to doing? Not doing any interviews. That's okay. Just photos, right? Yeah, 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 we'll do some photos. That's fine. Photos, however, absolutely fine. And as I'm sure you've seen before, once inside, things went crazy. Perhaps too crazy, as we got stuck, unable to move. Tricking the public was one thing, but we wanted to trick some other celebrities who should know better. So with the help of Will and E, we invaded VIP. This is amazing. This is so good. But the, the, the way you dress is phenomenal. And then Ty from Manchester momentarily forgot how to speak as playmate and Instagram star Amanda Cerny asked him who he thought was going to win the fight. Keemstar thought Ty Jones looked like a famous singer until he realized he was one. Summer Rae was being exceptionally kind to me and Casper as she waited for us to introduce her to Ty Jones. <laughs> Trying to get to our seats was proving impossible. Until the Staples Center boss invited us into a VIP area we didn't even know existed. So we've basically just been taken into the most VIP area, like 
they didn't want to let me and Casper in. They only wanted to let in. And so we only got in here because of, because of Ed Sheeran. So like adults, we went into the toilet together to try and plot our escape. Mm -hmm. Because he personally invited Ed Sheeran into the chairman's room. We, we need to get out he of here. He said he took him on tour with Taylor Swift. He did, he did. He did. The red sauce. Oh yeah. my god. Sorry, a little bit about that, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I just peed in front of you. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Sweet. Sweet. So upon leaving the VVIP area, instead of being taken back to our original seats, we were taken to new seats in the front row of ringside. We didn't find out until afterwards that the decision to upgrade our seats came from the very top. Here's Eddie Hearn talking about what happened. So security goes up to, I think, Sean, who works with us, or even Frank, and says, listen, Ed Sheeran's at the back. He's getting absolutely mobbed. So I've gone, fuck that, bring him up the front. I'm in Rick Ross's seat. Right. Jonah, you're in uh, Dan Bilzerian. You can see on my phone screen, that's Eddie Hearn. Sat next to him is the head of the zone, and then there is some just ginger Donny from I don't know Burnley. So next thing, Ed Sheeran comes out the front. He sits there. Everyone's going. The whole arena chasing him for photos, yeah. right? So I'm sitting there. I've gone. That's not Ed Sheeran. Frank goes. It is Ed Sheeran. I went. It's, is it? So the real story of what happened here is that Eddie Hearn suspected we might not be with the real Ed Sheeran, so he came over to have a chat with us and asked all about Ed's life. It slowly became apparent to him that Ty was in fact not Ed Sheeran, but to be fair to him, he took it really well, told us he thought we were hysterical, but the real Justin Bieber was about to show up, so he would appreciate it if we went back to our original seats. And they knew we were talking about it then, but fair play, I think it was quality. So we went back to our original seats and enjoyed the show. Here we go. Ed, what do you think? Who won it? I don't know. We're going to find out. To the win by split decision from the United Kingdom. <laughs> So as you know, KSI won the fight and we were snuck out the back door in the celebrity fashion we were now accustomed to. So that worked. Yeah. Yeah. And as we were leaving, look who walked straight past. Hold on, dude. What's up? What's up? What's up? So I was, I was walking back to my locker room in the tunnel and I, I, I looked to my left and I see this fucking dude looking at me. <laughs> With this Look face. at his nose. It's not the same With nose. With this face. And I'm in my mind, in my <laughs> in my loser mind, I'm like, <laughs> you always have Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. We think we know our celebrity idols, but as this video proved, we really, really don't. Anyway, that wasn't going to stop us having a great night on the back of our fake Ed Sheeran. Everyone over there, let's go. Oh my God. So we just snuck into the club by saying he's Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ty Jones isn't much of an Ed Sheeran fan, so he didn't know any of the Ed Sheeran lyrics that we're playing. But that didn't seem to bother the nightclub we were at, who brought out a special show for KSI and Ed Sheeran. YouTuber Josh Pieces has taken pranking to a whole new level. In arguably one of the most elaborate pranks the internet has ever seen, Peters had Hopkins travel all the way to Prague to accept a fake award, which was called the Campaign to Unify the Nation Trophy. Archie and I are often asked how on earth we pulled this off, and we're not quite sure. But like with a lot of our work, this relied on a combination of hard work, bravery, and a load of luck. We spent months agonizing over every detail, even making sure that her campaign to unify the nation trophy looked perfect. You're gonna engrave it with Catherine Hopkins or Katie Hopkins or? I think Katie, everyone knows her as Katie. Or Katie. Katie Hopkins. It's for an award called Campaign to Unify the Nation Trophy. Okay, Just get that on there. The eagle has landed. I don't, we've got to stop calling it the eagle. At this point, Katie had fallen for it. She'd replied to our emails, she'd flown to Prague, and she thought we were genuine. 
But that was the easy bit. Emailing people is easy. You can mull over each word before sending it. But if we were going to be in the room with Katie, we had to be a well-oiled machine, prepared for anything that might happen. The screen isn't showing up too well on the video. Fine. Okay, but maybe the red is the thing, mate. Maybe, maybe the red is the problem. Could be. How does this look, mate? If I was to go... Are the problems still not the same? It's completely different. It's better now? Yeah. Okay, then just We'd booked actors, all of whom lived in Prague, and none of whom were racist. So we had to brief them on how to behave and give them all credible backstories. Uh, my name is Stephen Gray, normally known as Steve. Uh, I'm from South Africa. Uh, I currently work for Pam Golding Property Services, okay. like yourself. Mm. We're, we're sort of maybe slightly starstruck with fans. Yes, yeah. person absolutely. Just, absolutely. Wanna, just yeah. happy to hang out with them. Yeah, yeah. And we had to make sure they wouldn't laugh when a giant c**t got up in front of them. You're looking at Katie, you're not looking at c**t. Um, it is going to be funny, but if we can try and get this so into our brains that it's not funny at the time. We rehearsed my speech about 50 times to make sure this didn't happen. Which brings me on to Katie Hopkins, the recipient of this year's inaugural Cut of the Year Award. Oh. Can't say that. What? Oh. Just came out. Like this. Oh. That's not too bad, mate. <laughs> <laughs> then it was time for Archie and I to have a little moment of calm before Katie arrived. Big moment. <laughs> Which she did, 15 minutes before she was meant to, while I was still fixing a GoPro into the ceiling. Anyway, luckily she believed me when I said I was just fixing a light. Now, a lot of making sure this worked involved making Katie feel comfortable and that she felt surrounded by supporters of hers. So here she is telling me about the Brexit Day celebrations in London. We continued pretending to be her friend over dinner. Definitely accentuating that accent. He's never that posh normally. Yeah. I think he's just showing off. <laughs> That's a good local <laughs> coffee shop. Oh, Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They call the Charles Bridge because people are standing I can heartily recognize Starbucks. And so far, so good. But the big moment was still to come. It is not at all possible to properly outline just what an inspiration you are to us all, Katie. It is an absolute pleasure on behalf of all of the members of the Cape Town Collective for the Freedom of Speech to announce that the recipient for the 2020 Campaign to Unify the Nation trophy is Katie Hopkins. <laughs> with our main objective completed. Katie congratulated us on our work. Uh, I think you did a good job there. I think your dad would be really proud. Yeah. You did a nice job. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for that speech. Normally it is a kind of a, an incoming deluge of fireballs. Um, so yeah, my name is Katie Hopkins. I'm a little bit bothered by her being behind me as well. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm behind they say you should never talk about yourself in the third person, but I feel like I'm being third person stood here. Well, at least you couldn't get worse. <laughs> there was so much offensive, untrue, and unfounded nonsense in Katie's speech, we actually couldn't include it all. Build a wall, not only a wall high enough so the man breaks its legs when he jumps off the top of it, but a, a wall that goes subterranean. You know, the Israeli wall goes eight metres is below ground as well so the little rodents can't bury under it. I remember going to Trump's inauguration where I basically stood there going oh please let me blow you. You know we are lost in the UK. In five years we start to become outnumbered so there are more births to Muslim than to any other. Mohammed and Mohammed are the two most popular names in the UK today. If you call Mohammed in a school playground in the UK 2005 kids come running and you don't want any of them. In my country, I am already a minority in Birmingham, Bradford, Luton, Leicester, parts of London, Tower Hamlets, for sure, Newham, other places where people get stabbed a lot or try and rape their own mother or have five wives. Those places, I'm already a minority. I will be a minority in my own country. We will be by 2040. We're gone. People are either moving to Israel, Jewish people are moving to Israel, People like me, we're looking at Poland, Hungary, America. And in America, you see people moving. They're moving out from California. They're going to Texas. They're going to Idaho. They're going to Arizona. And the question always is to those people, and they haven't quite got there yet, is where are you going to go after? Where are you going to go next? And if people say to me they're going to come to the UK, we've got 10 years. We are all looking 
for what white South Africans are looking for, which is a defendable space from which we will prepare to make a last stand. As a white South African, just quickly going to clear up that I'm not looking for a defendable space to make my final stand. One of the brilliant things about Boris Johnson getting in, Brexit happening in a couple of days, is that Boris Johnson is fantastic. He's a great, great guy. The other joy will be that we do have Boris Johnson and when Trump gets in in November, we have Boris Johnson and Trump together on the White House. And the great thing with Boris and Trump together is that we have two men who don't really f*** about. They tell it pretty straight. Yeah. They know where the heart of our country is at. Thank you very much. Cape Town Collective on three. One, two, three. Cape Town! So, from a woman who did everything she could to be heard, to a woman who didn't want to be heard at all. Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin just did her first interview since the release of Netflix's docuseries Tiger King with Jimmy Fallon. Mmm, well, at least she thought she was talking to Jimmy Fallon. This was a video that really shouldn't have happened. Archie and I had spent weeks tricking celebrities into thinking they were guests on late night American talk shows. We told them that they wouldn't see the presenters, they'd just be able to hear them allowing us to play pre-recorded clips of American talk show hosts to our celebrity guests. An idea that came from watching Pierce Morgan interview a UK government minister who couldn't see a copy of a newspaper Pierce was holding up. The Daily I I'm, gonna I'm, sh I'm showing viewers a Daily Mail front page. Okay. I don't know why you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Well, oh, because I can't see it. You said well, I'm telling you what it is. It's actually very serious. My reaction just then was because you said you'd show me something and that I've, I've been asked to set up the camera so that I'm looking into it, so I can't see what Listen, you're... Listen, it's fine. I, I'll be up. I was I telling will, you what the front no, page no, said. Everyone from Craig David to Molly May wanted their moment in the American limelight. But then we had an idea. Could we use the same technique to interview someone who really didn't want to be interviewed? At the time, that was Queen of Tiger King. Carol Baskin down at Big Cat Rescue. So we emailed her to invite her onto the Jimmy Fallon show. The next day, we woke up to a surprise. Carol Baskin's people had responded. However, she had responded saying no. She wasn't a fan of how Netflix had portrayed her in Tiger King. And then a day later, the Queen of the Tigers came out of her cage to say that she would do the interview. All thanks to her daughter Jamie, who is a big fan of the Jimmy Fallon show. Now, you saw Archie run out of credit on his burner phone as he tried to organize a time. Okay, go with us. You can access all the offers now to hear the rules around credit and debit cards. But what you didn't see was Archie not realising how time works. Uh, boys and girls, uh, slight announcement. Uh, I've forgotten that the clocks have moved by an hour. Uh, so we're an hour early. Uh, yeah, um, it's BS. We're in British summertime now, aren't we? So that's you f***ing up, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that. And we are back. Hopefully uh, Archie has got the right time now and we will actually be talking to Carol Baskin in five minutes. Okay, New York, I have uh, Carol Baskin in the room now. Okay, we're gonna leave her waiting for two minutes if that's all right. Once Archie had worked out how clocks work, this had to work like clockwork. So just as The Tonight Show would, we made her wait a few minutes. Imagine this takes us all by surprise and she opens up the thing and she goes, oh my God, you're that guy from that damn Katie Hopkins video. <laughs> okay, admitting Carol Baskin now. She's on a green screen. Hello. So, having avoided the catastrophe of booking Carol at the wrong time, Archie did the most 2020 thing imaginable. I cannot hear you. Your microphone is muted. Hi, Carol. How are you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm having the same problems that everyone's having on this bloody software. Always on mute and then not on mute. How are you? Uh, are you ready? Is Steve ready with sound? We got Steve with sound? Archie and I had a system. I was Steve and Sharon, or whoever else Archie pretended to be talking to. And when he spoke to them, I would simply reply to him via WhatsApp. We're just going to do your levels, if that's all right. Now, normally when you do a TV interview, you're asked to say what you had for breakfast. But Archie and I thought that was boring. And we're much more interested in hearing about Carol's cats. Amanda Tiger, Sapphire Tiger, Aria Tiger, Manny Jaguar, <laughs> Armani Leopard. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, so the first thing you'll hear is Jimmy's first question. Okay, Carol, they are, they are, they are now ready. Jimmy is standing by. <clears throat> okay, coming to Jimmy's first question with Carol Baskin. Three, two, one. So the first question in our video was in fact not the first thing to happen in Jimmy and Carol's interview. 
my daughter Jamie suggested I do this interview with you. So she says, Thank hi. you so much and for being on our show. We appreciate it. We love you. How are you? Okay, we're just going to do that one more time, if that's all right. Sorry, everyone. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll hear Jimmy first. I'll hear him. Okay. <laughs> For obvious reasons, Jimmy couldn't conversate with Carol. He could only ask questions. Thank you so much for being on our show. We appreciate it. We love you. How are you? I'm doing great. My daughter, Jamie, suggested that I do this interview with you, so she says hi. Well, thank goodness for Jamie Baskin. Early on, there was a moment where I thought I'd blown it. You really did that? I'm sorry? But thank goodness I had another question ready. It you, you looks like you're really handling this whole quarantine well. Yeah, I, we have to. We have so many cats depending on us. We don't have a choice in, in the situation. Okay, that's great, Carol. Thank you. That's our kind of quarantine bit done. We cut the interview into segments so that Archie could jump in as the producer and keep moving things along before anything seemed too suspicious. We had to get Carol saying her famous feline phrase. Yeah, this, I'm Carol Basket. In fact, if you wanted to even do it, because it's quite a fun little segment like you do your YouTube videos. Hey, cool cats and kittens. Here is, because that's such a great <laughs> phrase. Here is... Uh, and then out of nowhere, she pulled out a flower crown. Oh, cats flowers. and kittens. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, please, don't put that on. That'd be great. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. And these are some of the cats at the sanctuary. Just as we were going into another segment, the camera's memory card malfunctioned. So to buy time, Archie asked Carol about her hat. It's actually a hakule. It's a um, celebration of life. It's not a flower crown. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been calling it a hat, which is probably very rude. It took me ages to find a fresh memory card. Sharon? Sharon, what's going on? Oh, come on, Sharon, I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Please, come on, Sharon. I know, I know. tell Steve he's got to get back. Okay, thank you. Sorry about this. Steve, mate, seriously, get a grip. It's an absolute disgrace. We've got guests waiting. Once back with a fresh memory card, we started to try push our luck. Is there any way you could just do a sort of tiger, rrr, <laughs> and you just gift that out? Just a rrr. <laughs> I do not think so. <laughs> you don't think so. No, no worries. Sorry, Sally. It's a no to the worry. Either way, the interview went well and Carol took it brilliantly, which is exactly what we'd hoped for. So in a year of so much misery, we hope that we've managed to make you think a little and smile a lot. The future will be brighter and Archie and I will be back. Not that that will help it be brighter, but we'll be back anyway. Also, thanks once again to Displate for sponsoring this video. Please check them out using the link in the description below. It's all